Thanks very much. <clears throat> Thanks for the invitation to come. I'm delighted to be here. So I want to talk about uh, some mouse models for studying sex differences. Uh, first, I want to uh, agree with and amplify what Steve Alsted said about a broad comparative approach. We can only really understand basic bio biological principles by studying a lot of different forms of animals. Some of the ideas that I'm asking in our mouse models came from the study of birds, at least in my own lab. Uh, so, and the birds were telling us things that uh, were thought not to be true of mammals, and we're now using mammals to show that they're also true of mammals. So, um, we start with the observation that um, a disease has a sex difference in incidence or progression. That means that one sex is protected from disease, and that sex, so, so, uh, and that sex biasing factors, that this protection of one sex, means that there's something that's inherently different between males and females that um, is, is uh, uh, controlling mechanisms that are protective. And if we can discover those sex biasing protective mechanisms, we'll understand the disease better. If we don't understand those sex differences, we won't actually understand the mechanisms of disease and how to approach it. Um, there are two general answers um, in mammals to what kinds of factors. So we'd like to develop a general theory of sexual differentiation. That, um, what are all, let's get a whole list of all the things that are inherently different between males and females. Um, so that we can kind of go down the list and say, okay, is this disease influenced by this sex biasing factor or that sex biasing factor? And there are two major classes of such factors, uh, gonadal hormones and sex chromosomes. All sex differences start ontogenetically in mammals from the sex chromosomes because in the zygote, in the fertilized egg cell, the only factors that are different between males and females are the sex chromosomes. At least that's what we believe now. We don't know anything else that's different in the, sync, the, the, the one cell uh, developing organism. So it all has to come from the sex chromosomes. And the old theory is on the left. In fact, this theory is so dominant and so convincing and so simple um, and, and that it's still in medical school textbooks. It's taught today um, at, a, <laughs> at the annual meeting of the Organization for the Study of Sex Difference, a keynote speaker showed the diagram on, on the left two years ago, okay? All right, it really annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that is the, the old idea is that this inherent difference, oh, the, the inherent difference at the top, the inherent difference between XX and XY, the sex chromosome difference, first at, uh, at plays out as a, a, uh, to cause the difference in uh, testicular versus ovarian development. That is, there's a gene on the Y chromosome, that's a Y in mammals, that makes testes develop. In the absence of that gene, other genes control the development of the ovaries. And that's the first sex difference in the gonads. And then after that, the gonads secrete gonadal hormones, testosterone, estradiol, progesterone, and those hormones act throughout the rest of the body to act on non-gonadal tissues to cause sex differences. Um, the, the first process is called sex determination, the second process, and it's genetic, the second process is hormone called sexual differentiation. The problem is that the, there are sex differences even before the, in the liver, in uh, almost any cell of the body that you cell type in the body, there are sex differences before the gonads develop, and they don't have anything to do with gonadal hormones, okay? And they're caused by inherent differences between XX and XY genomes in those cells. Um, and so you have this, um, is there a pointer? No. So you have um, uh, also in non-gonadal cells, the inherent genomic difference, the expression of X genes is different, the expression of Y genes is different between males and females. And these are called sex chromosome effect and they have effects um, um, throughout the body. So there's both of these factors, the hormones and sex chromosome factors are happening at the same time. They can oppose each other. They can be synergistic with each other. The hormone factors we divide into organizational or permanent effects. The boy is born with a penis because he had testosterone prenatally. That's an effect of testosterone that lasts throughout his life, whether he has or has testosterone at any time in his life. That's a permanent effect of testosterone. But then in adulthood or later on, males and females differ in their levels of gonadal hormones, estrogens, progestins, et cetera, and that causes sex differences that are transient. When the hormone goes away, the effect of the hormone goes away. Um, 
Okay. So, what? Okay. So, um, about what, 14 years ago, um, a committee um, uh, uh, that I was on published this uh, rather uh, lengthy paper in endocrinology, which was kind of best practices. How do you go about studying sex differences? And and um, there's a logic tree here uh, in which the first question is, is there a sex difference? My mouse has a sex difference in the disease. Now what? what how, where do I find what are those biological processes that cause the sex difference? So there's three major classes. There are these transient or activational effects of gonadal hormones, the permanent effects of gonadal hormones, and the sex chromosome effects. And the logic tree says, well, let's first check for the activational effects of hormones take out the gonads and see whether the sex difference goes away in, a, in an animal model, okay? If it doesn't go away, then you can say, well, maybe it's then a permanent effect of gonadal hormones. So then you would start manipulating hormones prenatally or postnatally to see if the hormones during development have a long lasting effect during life. And if that doesn't explain the sex difference, then you could go to the sex chromosome effect. Today, I would actually say that, okay, this is actually not a bad, still a bad logic tree a lot of, a progression of ways of thinking about investigating a sex difference in an animal model, in a mouse model. Um, but in fact, we now know that there are more sex chromosome effects than we used to think, and so it might be worth looking for sex chromosome effects earlier in, in the logic tree. So look for hormone effects too, but also pretty soon look for sex chromosome effects. So the main mouse model, um, and unfortunately we can only do this in mice so far, although we're trying to do it in other species, the uh, main animal model to start with to ask whether there's a sex chromosome effect is called the four core genotypes. It was developed by Paul Burgoyne and Robin Noble Dad uh, in London. And uh, this, um, this, this model makes, uh, uh, separates the effect of hormones and gonadal um, and, and sex chromosomes, okay? It makes, instead of two sexes, four sexes, animal, two kinds of animals with ovaries, XX and XY females with ovaries, or XX and XY animals with um, testes. Um, the normal male, the wild type male, has SRY on the Y chromosome, and in this animal model, SRY is taken off the Y chromosome and put onto an autosome. It's moved, and now instead of making two kinds of sperm, X sperm and Y sperm, the, the, the father of the four core genotypes uh, babies makes four kinds of sperm. He, he makes X sperm with SRY or without, or Y sperm with SRY or without. The mice with SRY have testes, the mice without SRY have ovaries. And so it's a, there are four different genotypes, the four core genotypes, XX and XY females, XX and XY males with um, uh, testes, and it's a two by two. <coughs> if a phenotype is, is different between animals, sorry, is different between animals with testes uh, versus animals with ovaries, we say it's probably caused by hormones. Whereas if it's different between animals that are X, X versus XY, we say that difference is caused by sex chromosome. So by now, um, um, we and our collaborators and other groups that we've not been collaborating with at all have used this model and um, have looked at a variety, wide variety of um, uh, physio physiological um, outcomes and also disease phenotypes. And in many cases, for example, Ronda Vasco's lab at UCLA has studied autoimmune disease um, in mice and, and finds that, yeah, there is a hormone effect. Uh, so female, so in, in multiple sclerosis, women get MS more than men. In the mouse model, the female mice get the, the model more of multiple sclerosis more than the male mice. If you give the female mice testosterone, it protects them, so hormones have an effect. But in addition, um, the um, uh, XX animals are worse than the XY animals, independent of whether they have testes or ovaries. So you have a combination of hormonal and sex chromosome effects, um, and we see this in a variety of um, uh, phenotypes. So the um, um, I'm going to give you a, a, a show a few slides of one of the largest sex chromosome effects we see, which is related to metabolism. This is a project led by Karen Rui, the CLA is a metabolism expert in collaboration with our lab. And if you just start, we're, we're talking about body weight and um, adiposity, how much body fat there is. If you just weigh the mouse of the four core genotype, genotypes um, at uh, three uh, weeks of age, when you wean the mouse from the mom, the um, four different groups weigh about the same. There's no difference. 
But after hormones kick in, after puberty by day 45, the mice with testes weigh more than the mice with ovaries. So that suggests that there is an effect of gonadal hormones. It could be the male's hormones, it could be the female's hormones. We're not um, um, sure exactly, which is probably both, but I think the male's hormones are, are probably dominant here. Um, so it looks like a hormone effect. So what do we do as endocrinologists? We take out the gonads to see if the sex difference goes away. And it does um, after about a month, but then if we wait longer, then there emerges a second kind of sex difference, which is that the XX animals weigh more than the XY. They also are a lot fatter than the XY. So this is controlling body weight and adiposity. Um, and here's a the dynamic over a about eight month period of time. So two and a half months, the, the four groups of animals, two with testes, two with ovaries, are gonadectomized. The males are weigh, the gonadal males are weighing more than the gonadal females here. After a, a month after you take out the harm, uh, the and now with hormones, the four groups weigh about the same, but then gradually the two XX groups become heavier and fatter than the other. This is a big effect, as big as the hormone effect, and you kind of unmask it by taking out the hormone. You go to a second model called the XY star model developed by Eva Eicher at Jackson Labs. And here we can vary the, the sex chromosomes in different ways. And we can compare animals with two X chromosomes versus one or with one Y chromosome versus zero. We do exactly the same experiment. And we uh, take out the gonads at about two and a half months of age. Uh, and the two groups that uh, get heavier and fatter have two X chromosomes versus the two groups on the bottom that have uh, only one X chromosome. So this is an X chromosome effect. So now we can say, okay, what is it on the X chromosome that's making, affecting, uh, making a sex difference because of that. females having two X chromosomes versus having uh, males having one. There are, in, uh, we can have four general categories of sex differences. I, I think I don't really have time to talk about this. Um, the one that we think is important here is that um, some, although as Steve said, um, in XX cells, one X chromosome is shut off in Ethereum mammals, um, uh, some of the genes escape X inactivation are, and are inherently expressed at a higher level in XX than XY because of the number of X chromosomes. And um, so we've now taken this to the level of single gene and we have a, a, can show that a single gene on the X chromosome com controls body weight in that. <coughs> the escape from X inactivation, as Steve alluded to, is um, greater in the human X chromosome. This is a terrific study um, from two years ago, mapping out using GTEx consortium data, just a huge amount of data of, of human tissues, a variety of tissues and a variety of genes and mapping genes. And all the red genes here are higher in females than in males. The blue genes are higher in males than in females. And so this, this uh, um, bias in the sex chromosomes is an inherent source of potential variability in phenotypes. So if any of you are interested in um, um, using these models, um, I'd be happy to discuss with you where you can find them and use them and then what strain backgrounds. And, and I've also published papers on this. Um, and I want to thank my collaborators at UCLA um, um, who have led me in terrific directions in different disease models. Um, thank you very much.